A very good evening to all of you. I hope all of you are safe and doing well. So in today's class, what we're going to learn about is we're going to learn about uh, evolution of software engineering as an engineering paradigm. Here before you, what we have is we have a very simple representation that tries to show the progression that has taken place in the evolution of software engineering. Now, in order to explain this uh, representation, what I need to make you understand is I need to make you understand the distinction between the three different terms that is called as art, craft, and engineering. Now, I will be trying to differentiate art, craft, and engineering from two different aspects. One is shape and the other one is size. Now, if you agree by me, art is a, uh, art is a representation that neither has a shape nor has, nor has a size. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of representation of one's own uh, perspective or one's own opinion about the entity of interest. And art is often created by using one's own perspective and one's own opinion about the entity of interest that you do not want to share. So art neither has a shape nor it has a, uh, it has a size. Likewise, craft. A craft is a concept that has a shape but it does not have a definite size. To elaborate on this further, let us consider as, uh, an example. In our school days, we used to create craft. And uh, uh, for an example, uh, a duster made by two different students used to look alike, but it used to vary in size. So it's a craft. So craft has a has a say, but it does not have a size. Likewise, an engineering product has both shape as well as size. So art is created using esoteric past experience. That means uh, your own perspective that you don't, don't want to share, which is rather unorganized and uh, unprocedural. Whereas engineering product is uh, created using uh, uh, scientific principles and systematic approach. So this is the way how software engineering has evolved with respect to time. It has evolved from an art form to craft form uh, to engineering uh, to an engineering discipline. Now, why uh, there might be a question uh, that might be triggering your mind that why do we need to study software engineering? Now we need to st uh, study software engineering. Uh, in order to cater to wide requirement of uh, software. So for an example, the first one is to acquire skill to develop larger program. Whenever the size of the program increases, then there is exponential growth in the complexity and the difficultness with which the solution is to be framed for a particular problem. So in order to efficiently and effectively manage the complexity of the uh, the system, what we need is we need software engineering principles. We need software engineering principles in situation where the ad hoc approach fails to cater uh, to the requirement. The second reason why we need software engineering is to uh, inculcate in one the ability to solve complex problem. Software engineering pr uh, principle relies on the principle, uh, uh, software engineering discipline relies on the principle of divide and conquer, where a problem is divided into a set of identifiable sub problems or sub manageable complexities. Uh, and then individual manageable complexities are solved and combined to provide solution to a problem. So that is what software engineering principle teaches one, how to break down larger problem into smaller manageable problems. Now the third reason why we need software engineering is to uh, equate one to, uh, to, uh, to the techniques like uh, specification, uh, design, interface development, how to test, and how to efficiently and effectively manage project uh, a, a software project. Now, specification here basically uh, refers to uh, a mechanism for creating a representation of the requirement, whereas uh, uh, design uh, is to provide a suitable structure to the system. Interface is to enable uh, a user to uh, interact with the system. Test is to determine the correctness of implementation. And overall project management um, infer, uh, uh, infers to uh, resource allocation, labor management, uh, time management, schedule, and so on and so forth. Now, eventually, we require software engineering to acquire skills to be a better programmer. Yes, 
uh, if you are well acquainted to the uh, basic principles of software engineering, that it then it enables one to uh, have uh, enable wants to create uh, want to create a better quality program and uh, and with a very high productivity. So these are the various reasons why we need software engineering principles. Now. Software over a period of time has has been suffering through many crises, right? A software system uh, fails uh, uh, fails uh, to meet up to the uh, to meet up to the expectation. Now there are various reasons why software system may fail. Now software system may fail uh, because. Uh, it may be uh, un, it may be uh, incapable of meeting up to the expectation of the the user. Uh, it frequently fails. Uh, it frequently crashes. It's very expensive that uh, 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 that it may be difficult for the customer to buy. It is difficult to alter, debug, and enhance. That means uh, it uh, does not um, it does not uh, uh, accept changes as we have stated in the uh, the laws of software as it is stated in the law of software evolution. Uh, that is law of continual change. It states that a software product should continuously change or become progressively less useful. So a software system may fail if it's not capable of adapting to new requirement. A uh, software system may fail in situation where it's uh, delivered late. So if it's a, a task critical system and if it's delivered late, then software system fails, right? A uh, software system fails in situation where it's capable of non-optimally utilizing resources. So these may be the few. These may be uh, the few reasons why a software system may fail. Now, what? Uh, let us also list what are the factors that are contributing to a software crisis. Now, the problem size. Problem size may be one of the the prime reason why a software system uh, may fail or may lead to software crisis. For example, uh, if you have a very large problem, very difficult to manage, then it may fail, uh, or a developer may fail to develop such kind of uh, solution. Now, lack of adequate training in software engineering principles. Yes, if if uh, the uh, the developers are ill-acquainted to these uh, basic fundamental software engineering principles, then they may not be able to manage the the uh, the problem. Increasing skill skill shortage definitely. If there is a shortage in the uh, the skilled labor force, then uh, the development of a software system may be uh, uh, jeopardized. And low productivity improvements. So this may also be one of the reason why uh, uh, software system may uh, fail or factors that may contribute to software crisis. Now, move, uh, before moving forward, I want you to differentiate between uh, two different um, terms that is program and software. It, very of, it is very often asked in the, uh, the question paper that differentiate between a program and a software. Now here I found an appropriate uh, mechanism for differentiating a uh, software program and a software. It is done over various bases. So there is a basis for comparison between uh, a program and software. So the first piece is description. A program is a set of instructions that are capable of performing a particular function, whereas a software is a collection of programs. Uh, second one is category. A program cannot be further categorized, whereas a software can be categorized into application software and uh, system software, as we have already learned in the previous class. Flexibility. A program cannot be a software, whereas a software can be a program. A software may have one or more than one program. Uh, a program consists of a set of instructions that are capable of ex uh, realizing certain business, coded in some, using some programming language, whereas a software consists of set of programs with uh, data files because just see here it's one important aspect that you need to uh, remember is that program ha a system has to have a set of uh, a, a software has to have a set of programs as well as the data file on which the program works now user interface a program is normally not expected to have an interface whereas every software has to have a dedicated user interface development uh, a, a program is developed uh, by, it may be developed by a single person or a, say, or a, or a group of uh, programmer for one own, one's own use, whereas software is developed by either a single programmer or a, or a group of programmer for others to use. Now, compilation, every time a program is expected to deliver a result, it has to be compiled, whereas a software is compiled, tested, and debugged during development time itself. Functionalities and features. 
uh, a, a program has a set of uh, or limited set of functionalities and limited set of features, whereas a software is expected to have a lot of functionalities and a lot of features such as graphical user interface, input output uh, processes and the uh, and the and the the central transfer or the processing of modules and so on and so forth. Dependability. Pro, uh, Program functionality is often dependent on compiler, whereas software functionality is dependent on the operating system. Now, creation time. A, a program takes a relatively lesser amount of time uh, to, uh, to be created, whereas a software takes considerable amount of time because the software has to go through a set of identifiable software lifecycle phases, and then eventually it has to be completed, it has to be deployed, it has to be used, and so forth and so forth. So creation time, uh, in comparison to program software, uh, creation time is considerably larger. Now, development approach. Uh, well, while developing uh, a program, it is not necessary or mandatory to abide by software engineering principles because these are problems with relatively smaller size. Whereas whenever you are developing a software, it is uh, very much mandatory to abide by software engineering principles. So program development approach may be, uh, may be, uh, may be unprocedural or unorganized or unplanned, whereas a software development uh, approach uh, should be completely systematic, it should be completely disciplined and organized and well planned. Now documentation. Uh, a program need not be documented because program is meant for one's own use. Whereas a software system has to be properly documented because a software is built by one for another. So a software system has to be properly documented. So uh, the, the study document is to be created, the feasibility study document is to be created, um, the requirement analysis and specification document is to be created, the plan document is to be created, the design document is to be created, uh, coding itself is a document, uh, the test document is to be created, the deployment document is to be created, user manuals are to be created, so and so forth. So there are many types of documents that may be, uh, that, that are associated with software that needs to be created. So software always has to be properly documented. So these are the, the various uh, differences uh, between a program and a software. So what I want you to remember is I want you to remember the basis. That is description, category, flexibility, uh, what it's con uh, composed of, user interface, development, uh, compilation, features and functionalities, dependability, uh, creation time, development approach, and documentation. So these are the, the few identified bases uh, taking into account which uh, differences are drawn between a program and a software. Now uh, we'll move on to uh, emergence of software engineering, how software engineering has evolved with respect to time. So now to explain uh, this one, uh, explain emergence, what we need to uh, know is we need to know how the progression has taken place. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the initial approach that was used for software development was called as an ad hoc approach. An ad hoc approach or early program or the early computer programming or exploratory approach where based on where based on one's own intuition and one's own uh, opinion about the system, uh, the softwares were developed. The, the, the softwares were basically restricted to a few hundred lines of code because of the, the inability of the technology to handle it. So in case of ad hoc approach, uh, uh, assembly language programming was used where programs uh, which were restricted to a few hundred lines of codes were written based on one's own exploratory knowledge. Now then came on the, the, uh, the control flow based approach where with the advancement in technology as the cap capability of the system to sustain larger program increased, now the program size increased from hundreds to a few hundreds to a few thousand. So then uh, priority was given to control flow uh, where uh, the control flow between the various program structures were well maintained. Uh, so, the, so the evolution of technology did uh, lead to the evolution in the, the software engineering discipline as well. Then came on the data structure based approach. The, in data structure based approach, priority was given to the data structure that were participating uh, in, uh, the, in the realization of the problem for a particular, uh, realization of a solution for a particular problem. So based on the, the data structure, the program uh, instructions were written and the software was realized. Then came in data flow based approach where uh, uh, functionalities were given priority 
uh, over control and uh, data structure. So in case of data flow based approach, uh, systems where the, the software system would realize a set of interacting functions and uh, uh, the, the associate data flow were also maintained. So this is also uh, referred to as function-oriented approach. Then came on the object-oriented approach where uh, emphasis was given to objects and the relationships that are there participating uh, for realizing a particular system. So the objects were identified, the attributes were listed, methods were identified, then relationships were established in order to realize a, a, a system. Right? Then came on the, uh, the service-oriented approach. So the progression or the emergence has taken this particular route from an ad hoc approach to control flow based approach to data structure based approach to data flow based approach to object oriented approach and then uh, you have the, uh, the service oriented approach. So what you can do is the, you can go through the description and if there is anything that you need to that I need to elaborate on further just you can let me know. Now uh, let us try to understand what computer system engineering is all about. Now, computer system engineering uh, is, 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 a, is, is a domain where what we're trying to do is we'll try to look onto both the, uh, the hardware and the software aspects. So, for an example, there might be systems like you must have seen, you must have seen uh, uh, many systems where there's a strong dependency between the, the hardware component and the software component. So, for example, a coffee vending machine or for an example, a mobile phone, or for an example, an ATM machine, or for an example, a home automation system. So in such system, there is a huge degree of dependency between a, a, a software component, the hardware component. So computer system engineering, it has software as well as hardware engineering part. Now, many products, as it is specified here, requires development of both software as well as specific hardware to run it. So, an example, coffee vending machine, machine is listed here, mobile communication product, okay? So, in such, kind of, in such kind of situation where a system has both hardware and software component in it, so what we need to do is, we need to carry out the feasibility study phase first. So as in the, the system life cycles, you have feasibility study phase. You have requirement analysis and specification where what we try to do is we try to identify all possible requirements that the, the customer wants from the software system. And then what we do is we go on for hardware and software partitioning where what we do is we partition uh, the, the complexities that are involved in developing the software and, and complexities that are involved in manufacturing the hardware. Now just see, listen to me carefully. Uh, one of the distinction between hardware and software is also drawn in a manner that a hardware is manufactured where a software is developed. A hardware is never developed and a software is never manufactured. So you need to remember that. So hardware software partitioning is done where the associated complexities are separated with each other. Then what we do we'll move on with is we move on with the hardware manufacturing part. Sorry, it's written development. It is manufacturing part. So hardware manufacturing part and then software development for part and then eventually we move on with integration and testing. So overall project management in, in case of uh, uh, computer system engineering, we have these many phases, feasibility study phase, requirement analysis and specification phase, hardware and software partitioning, then we have hardware development, uh, software development and hardware manufacturing and integration and testing part. Now here in software development phase, uh, again what we have is we have uh, detailed design, we have uh, we have planning, we have design, we have coding, and then uh, you, uh, different forms of testing, right? Likewise, we have here, uh, um, we have here the hardware design, uh, then hardware manufacturing, and then hardware testing, and so on and so forth. So computer system engineering involved these many phases. So uh, till now, what we have learned into this class is we have learned how uh, software engineering uh, has uh, evolved with respect software engineering has evolved with respect to time okay we have learned uh, why we need software engineering right uh, we have learned what are the various reasons for software crisis we have also learned what are the various factors that are contributing to software crisis then we have differentiated between a program and a software taking into consideration various uh, uh, basis for comparison and then we have learned about how emergence of software engineering has taken place from an ad hoc approach uh, to from an ad hoc exploratory 
uh, approach to control flow based approach to data structure based approach to data flow based approach and object oriented approach and eventually uh, service oriented approach then we have learned uh, what are the the various uh, phases that are involved in uh, computer system engineering and uh, and uh, uh, a brief on each of the uh, the phases that are there now this uh, class ends the the first chapter of software engineering so thank you and all of you stay safe